So this table is used to separate materials by specific gravity. A specific gravity difference of 2.5 is enough for the table to cleanly and reliably make a separation. The materials are added to the table in the hopper on the right hand side. They move across the table to the end at the left hand side where they exit in one of these four ports that you can clearly see here in this picture. The first two ports are where the heavier or higher grade materials exit the table. The middle port is for your middlings and the fourth port is where the tailings come off of the table. When the table was designed 20 years ago, the thought was for the tailings to go right out onto the ground. But here in the desert, we like to recirculate water. Besides, there's a drought. So I have to come up with a much better way to collect this into a settling pond for recirculation. There is a learning curve associated with using this table. It is something that has to be monitored closely in order to achieve the best results. The areas of separation will change throughout the course of running samples based on the composition of the minerals that are put on the table. It is important for the base of the table to be fastened securely. In this case, I drilled holes in the concrete slab outside of my office and attached the base directly to the concrete using 5 8 inch bolts and redheads. The table must be absolutely level from side to side, and this can be accomplished using shims, as most concrete slabs are not exactly absolutely level. The front to back leveling of the table is accomplished by using a screw mechanism located in the front left corner of the table on the frame. By raising and lowering the table from front to back, the operator can control where the materials enter the collection ports at the end of the table. This is our P4. It works good, but it has some issues. This is a new table. I just picked it up. First thing I want to talk about is the end of this thing. I have no idea why somebody didn't put something on here to drain this water away. It just goes all over the place. The next thing is these are pretty stiff. And I guess if I had three troughs or three pieces of PVC pipe or something, I could figure out how to, how to make that work a little bit better. You can see all that black sand. And I'm going to business. Sorry if the video was shaking. However, you have to be able to control the forward to back angle of the table and the water flow and determine whether you want more water flow out of the spray bar or more water flow out of the trough. So it's hard to hold the camera and film all of that right, when you're trying to get started. The suds that you see are from a tiny little bit of jet drying, which helps to prevent the fine gold from floating off of the table. You 
can already see the separation taking place. There's a clearly defined line of heavier black sands forming up above a line of lighter blonde colored material. The gold that is in this black sand is anywhere from the size of a couple of small pickers to 100 to 200 mesh. And with the glare from the water, you can't see it traveling along in a very thin line at the very top of the line of black sand transference. Now I am going to intentionally lower the front end of the table and you can see how the line of black sand moves toward the middlings compartment as opposed to the higher grade compartment. After I disturb the line with my hand, it's starting to reform, and I will slowly raise the front of the table so that you can see how the material starts to move back up toward the high grade bin. It's pretty obvious. And after I disrupted the material with my hand, I uncovered a small piece of gold that was riding at the edge of the black sand, and if you watch carefully, you can see it fall off the table in the high grade bin. What I didn't show you is that I started out with a half of a five gallon bucket of material that I ran on the table. The important aspect of gold recovery is to make sure all of the material is classified to the same size and to make sure that the feed rate is consistent. I ran it with a greater slope toward the front of the table initially and that separated all out the lights and the heavies. What you saw here is the result of running the material probably about five times to the point where it was reduced to merely a couple of tablespoons of heavy black sands. Each time I ran the material on the table, I changed the angle of the table so that I can control what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to discard. And by doing this, I made multiple cuts and this allowed me to remove the bulk of the material, which is essentially valueless. Everybody likes to mine for gold. And because of gold's high specific gravity, this is a great tool for fine gold recovery. However, I also use this table when I'm examining other mineral deposits or things that may not necessarily have the highest specific gravity and fall somewhere in the middle and by being able to change the location of where these things leave the table, I can collect them because they form a distinct, easily divisible line across the surface of the table due to their difference in specific gravity.